Hey, what's up? This is GQ Recommends. Today, we're gonna to be talking about seven iconic boots. The boots we chose today all really fulfill a certain need in your wardrobe. Work boots, hiking boots, weatherproof boots, and then on top of that, they also look really good. Each of these boots are iconic in their own way. If you're not sure where to start, this is gonna be a good resource for that. You'll see boot trends flare up and they'll be cool for a season or two. We really tried to think outside of that. These are boots that would have been cool in 1972, they would have been cool in 2002, and they're still very cool in 2022 and beyond. Red Wing Classic Mock six inch boot. They've been around for a long time for good reason. These guys started out actually doing some hard labor. They're known for having a break in process. So they're really sturdy. Red Wing makes their own uh, leathers as well. So that's something special that you won't see everywhere. This thick, wedge sole is super comfortable, kind of helps offset the break-in period. And it's a boot that is made to last. It's made for hard wearing, but it also looks great with a pair of jeans, a pair of chinos. Even if you're not doing hard manual labor, these <laughs> are gonna serve you well, and for a long time. Yeah, they are like a classic all-American boot. I bought a pair of these like 12 years ago, still wear them all the time. The leather is held up beautifully over time. You know, like I've worn them through slush, through rain. And the great part about them too is that they're fully resolable. You can just bring it to a cobbler and they can pop it right off and sew a new one right on and it'll be good to go. Another classic work boot option is the Timberland six inch wheat boot. That's another one that is fully waterproof. It's built to withstand really intense working conditions. It'll last you a long time. It's great in all sorts of weather and looks good with a ton of things in your wardrobe. Danner Mountain Light Boots. If those Red Wing work boots aren't quite your vibe, then this is another very strong, very weatherproof, very versatile option, also made in America. It's from Danner, which is a brand out of Portland, Oregon. They have that very, very classic hiking style. If you're picturing a hiking boot or like an Alpine boot, this is probably the one that comes to mind. The style was a big hit when they introduced it in the 70s. A lot of similar hiking Alpine boots came after that. It was the first one to be waterproof and uses Gore-Tex. It's still breathable, but also will keep the water out, which is something you definitely want on the trails. But they also just look sick. Absolutely. Not on the trail. This lacing style is very bold and maybe it's mm. not for everyone, but these are way more versatile than you might think. Whether you're wearing a fleece, cool hiking pants, that kind of thing. You see guys in Italy wear these with a suit all the time, like with a nice mm. flannel suit, a pair of boots like this really goes off and really looks sick. Despite how like hefty they look, they're pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's right there in the name, Mountain Light. Mountain Light, exactly. <laughs> I mean, out of the boots that we've chosen today, this is probably the one I would wear every day. Mm -hmm. Merrill Moab 2 hiking boot. So if the Danners represent sort of the Ne Plus Ultra of hiking boots, this is the modern equivalent. Why are the Merrill Moabs like the GOAT hiking boot in your opinion? They've got a lot of tech behind them. I mean, mm -hmm. they've got a crazy Vibram sole for you to grip anything. It's like a four wheel drive Subaru for your oh, feet. Oh, totally, kind yeah. Of. <laughs> I mean, it's also waterproof and it's very light. It's super comfortable. It does feel a lot like a sneaker. And it looks like a sneaker in that kind of daddish way that's really cool right now, you know what I mean? They're very much of their era, which is, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s. Even more so than the Danners, the performance aspect here is really cool. In the spectrum of boots that we're talking about today, these are among the most affordable. Oh yeah. You can get them for as, as little as under $100 um, in some cases. These are the Moab 2s. Merrill just came out with the Moab 3, which they're really pushing, which right. means you can get some great deals on the Moab 2. Yeah, totally. I mean, the mother of all boots, one of the goats. It's kind of crazy that you can buy a pair of these for the same price or even cheaper than you know a lot of sneakers. During the pandemic, as people were endeavoring to get outdoors more, there's been a real explosion in people embracing outdoorsy, sort of techie clothes. You're seeing 
a lot more style-minded people embrace a shoe that looks like these Merrill Moabs. The first person that comes to mind for me is Frank Ocean. Yeah. Showing up to <laughs> Fashion Week mm -hmm. all like kitted out in waterproof clothing and like hiking boots. So it's not just for, you know, uh, avid hikers. It looks cool, you know, in the streets and it is very practical. I would say like, you know, if you're the kind of guy that likes wearing New Balance 990s, old school A6 runners, these are the boots for you, right? They have a very similar energy, very similar vibe. They're gonna go with a lot of the same kinds of clothes you would wear those sneakers with. And, you know, they have the added bonus of being able to handle whatever weather you wanna throw at them. LL Bean, original eight inch bean boot. They may not look like it, but these might actually be the hottest, hypest boots that we're talking about today. The bean boot has a tendency to sell out very quickly every winter, every fall, because they are maybe the best weatherproof boot on the planet. You're gonna want a pair of these on your side to like get you through the muck with dry, warm, not soggy feet. Some of the other boots that we've talked about are waterproof. The nice thing about these is this lower half is rubberized. So even if you do find yourself in a puddle or you know a Balenciaga show, right, uh, you can just hose this off. These are another like really really standard staple boot that a lot of people grew up wearing. You know they go well with a lot of those kind of um, old school staples, right? Like they'll look mm -hmm. great with an Oxford shirt, some chinos, corduroy pants, corduroy pants. Yeah. Their old school construction still really holds up to modern standards, I'd say. And they still make them in Maine. Which I think is part of the reason they sell out. They can't make a ton of them. They're not like super, super mass produced at this point still. If you're lucky enough to get your hands on them, because they are quite affordable and a really good value, you absolutely should. <laughs> Do it before winter comes. Because That's right. I mean, people forget and they're like, oh, now it's winter, I don't have boots. Yeah, when but, the first yeah. big blizzard hits in December or January, wherever you live, mm -hmm. uh, these guys will be gone. They make a lot of uh, versions of this. They this do. is probably the most classic one, mm -hmm. but there are even taller ones or slightly shorter ones. There's some that come with like a wool lining or, or a shearling it, lining. Shearling lining if it gets really cold. There are a lot of different versions of it for the weather you're experiencing. Tom Brown. Pebble grain wingtip boot. In a sort of hard left from the previous boot we were talking about is this pair from Tom Brown. This one is something he puts out every season and for good reason. It's really handsome, the silhouette's nice. These are probably not as like substantial or hardcore as like some of the other boots we've talked about, but they are definitely sturdier and more winter appropriate than just a standard pair of dress shoes. They're made of this really gorgeous pebble grain leather, mm -hmm. which um, is notoriously like quite tough and like can stand up to quite a bit and still have that really, really refined, elegant dress shoe-esque look. They're sleek, but at the same time, not dainty. I feel like that's mostly because of the, the sole, which mm -hmm. is pretty substantial. These are gonna go great with a suit or with mm -hmm. some dress pants, and they're way more versatile than that as well. Like, I would totally wear these with a pair of jeans on the weekend. You could pull these off with a whole wide variety of looks, and they're gonna look great. So, you know, in the event that you don't have that Tom Brown money, then a great option is Solo Bear. These are made in England boots. They used to be the makers of Doc Martens, and they still make these wonderful brogues that have a work boot-esque quality to them, but are still very, very in that dressy, upscale mode. Saint Laurent, Wyatt, Chelsea boot. On the extreme other end of the spectrum from where we started, these Saint Laurent Chelsea boots are super sleek. They're really not meant for any kind of bad weather or anything along those lines. These are made for going out, for looking and feeling awesome, for feeling like a badass. Chelsea boots were really cemented into pop cultural history. In the 60s, uh, they were called the Beetle Boot. They've sort of been associated with rock ever since, and you can kind of see why, right? I've actually never handled a pair of these. Yeah. And the details are pretty crazy. 
Saint Laurent makes these boots constantly. They are a staple of the Saint Laurent line. And as a result, they come in a lot of really cool makeups, like a gleaming patent leather that will look great with a tux. You can get them in like a, an extremely cool crushed velvet. If you're not totally psyched about uh, spending, you know, a grand or whatever on a pair of shoes, another option we like is from a brand called RM Williams. They've been around for a long time making boots in Australia yeah. and have sort of become this real icon of this style of Chelsea boot. They are also still very slim and sculptural and have like a very similar effect to the Saint Laurent, but they're not as flashy. They're like a little bit more restrained, a little more toned down, and you know, maybe a little bit more practical too, which is great. Tacovis, the Johnny. The last boot we're talking about is a cowboy boot. This brand, Tagovas, is a newcomer to the game, but I think, honestly, one of the best examples of like a D to C brand. The quality is really great. The price is what you want, but you're, you're getting a lot out of it. There's a lot of traditional techniques that go into this that really make it a classic cowboy boot. And I love the suede upper. They have them in a bunch of different materials, but this suede is gonna look so good worn in. These are very practical if you're riding a horse. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. like, I actually own these exact cowboy boots, yeah. and I bought them because last year I went mm -hmm. on a trip with some friends out to New Mexico, and we had, like, a whole cowboy experience. So I can say from experience that, you know, for actual cowboy duties, these cowboy boots hold up. They are kind of a swerve. That's why we sort of are talking about them last. Like they're definitely not as practical as, you know, like the duck boots we were talking about or as dressy as the Tom Browns. They kind of stand out from the crowd, but they're like well worth the effort if you're looking to take your boot game in a whole new direction. It's a great everyday boot. It's a great flashy boot. Also, I like that there are no laces. I don't have to waste yeah. my time. I just slip them straight on. You're wearing sort of like a variation on a cowboy boot right now, right, Gerald? Yeah, totally. Uh, this is a pull-on boot from a brand called Fry. This one in particular is called their Campus Boot. They have this square toe, which I like a lot. I think something like the cowboy boots or the boots I'm wearing, it's hard for me to imagine a pair of pants that won't go with it. They're both like very versatile and very eye-catching and bold at the same time. So those are all the boots that we're gonna be running through today. There's a lot to like. I think they're all really easy to style which is why we chose them, but do you have a favorite? I mean, yeah, I think I'm a little partial because, you know, I actually do own these exact boots. <laughs> um, they're a favorite of mine, so that's probably my my very favorite. Do you have one? Yeah, you, you took it. it it's, oh, these, okay. it's these also. <laughs> uh, but I also really like the Danners. That's probably the second one that I would wear like all the time. One day when I can afford those Saint Laurent's, I'm going to do it and you will see me stun everywhere. I look forward to that. What's great about all these boots is that, you know, they come in such a range of prices and styles. Like hopefully you guys found something worth investing in. It's gonna fit your lifestyle and fit your style. Well said. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>